time to take down the Christmas tree. It's 2020. Happy New Year, everybody. California Consumer Privacy Act. You're watching Unbillable. I want to start by saying that I have this large iPad. I forget what it is, iPad, whatever, the big iPad. And if you don't have a screenshot of your phone on your large iPad like this, you're missing out because then you fail to be able to be like, hello? Yeah, let me call you back. I'm filming on Bill. Thanks. Bye. I don't know why I've always just loved that. Like the giant iPhone. Like I got the new I I got the new iPhone 12 Max Pro. Check it out. Hello? Let me call I'm shooting on Billable. Let me call you back. Yeah, see? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Always, I just, I've been making that joke since the iPad got gigantic. I love so that. basically like 10 years. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know how long it's been. 10 years seems like a long time. Has yeah, the iPad yeah. been, have there even been 10 years of iPad Possibly yet? Fun. I don't know, I don't know. Oh, speaking of jokes that are too good, let's try this, all right. I don't know. I don't know if we can make this work with the magic of the vlog, but so maybe this won't, won't make the cut. But do you think that you can tell the difference between a dog and a muffin? It's an easy question. Do you think you can tell the difference between a dog and a muffin? Like you can eat one? I know you think you do because I sent this text message to five maybe unsuspecting friends of mine. Can you tell the difference between a dog and a muffin? And every single one of them came back with, "I believe that I can." And then I sent them this. Oh, wow. So, how'd you do? I, okay, this murdered me. This absolutely killed me. I don't know exactly how you describe that type of humor, but that's my kind of humor. I, I laughed for a long time. If you go back and um, go back to that screen, at the very bottom, there's actually one of the squares is a picture of a couple of muffins together, and right next to it is a couple of dogs together absolutely murders me. I need to close my cell phone so I don't keep laughing. All right, anyways. <laughs> I, I, I guess what we're here to talk about today is the, is dogs and muffins. No, it's the California Consumer Privacy Act. So what does that, what does that mean? CCPA for sure, but what does that really mean to you? What it means to you is that California has gotten into the internet business of protecting your private information. A lot of people, including a, a person running for president right now, have been talking about how your consumer information, your private information is being sold and shared for monetary gain, if you will, between companies, internet companies that you visit on the web. So like for example, you maybe go to a website and do some research about um, a new weighted blanket, let's say, and then all of a sudden when you go to amazon.com, lo and behold, what are they suggesting for you? Weighted blankets. I mean, it's like the, I call it the magic of the internet, right? It's the magic of the internet. It's its ability to suggest things for you um, that you've already been looking at or already been interested in, but the problem is, how are they going about doing that? I mean, I'll be honest with you, I don't know. I don't know how they do about, go about doing that. I am an attorney, I'm a lawyer. I do real estate business litigation. I mean, we have a vlog, but I don't even edit the vlog. My man Luis edits the vlog. I mean, I'm not the tech guy. I'm not the tech guy. I don't know how this stuff all works. I just kind of hit post or whatever. Okay, let's not get into all that. The moral of the story being, at some point, are you worried about your own privacy? Are you worried about your own personal information on the internet. Now, there are a lot of people that believe privacy is dead. California doesn't agree. And I think generally, the legal system, I sure hope we don't agree because I think people do wanna have some privacy, all right? And so the idea behind the California Consumer Privacy Act is to provide a whole lot of regulation for these companies that are collecting this information and then making financial gains from it. So what have they done? Have they just turned around and given the money to us, the consumers? No, they haven't. What they have done is kind of basically put in five rights. You have five general rights based on the California Consumer Privacy Act. The CCPA gives you, the consumer, five general rights. Now, I'm gonna take a moment and say, when those rights apply to you is kind of an interesting um, scenario, right? Whether it's to people that are living in California or um, residing in California temporarily and things like that, I'll let you check that out. But let's just assume for purposes right now that this act is gonna apply to you because it's gonna apply to everybody who lives in California. I live in California and um, you're getting five general rights, five rights from this act. The first one that you're getting is you get to know what information these companies are collecting about you, right? What information? Earlier I used the weighted blanket example. I don't think too many of us are worried about them collecting information about where shop, what we're shopping for. 
but they're collecting other information. What if you are filling out information about um, your payroll or direct deposit? Maybe they're finding out information about how much money you make, or you're filling out information for a medical website, maybe a hospital visit, something like that, scheduling an appointment with a doctor. Um, what kind of information are they collecting about you? Now, based on the CCPA, you get to find out right now. How do they go about complying with you knowing what information is collected about you? It's one of those privacy policies. You're gonna get one of those notices that says, hey, we comply with the California Consumer Privacy Act. And like me, you're probably just gonna click okay. You're probably not gonna read it. I mean, that's one of the interesting things about this is when you signed up for your iTunes account, you had to like agree to a bunch of stuff. And like me, you didn't read any of it. When you rent a car, you gotta sign your initials everywhere. You don't even read it. You don't read it. But here we're gonna give you an extra notice. That's the first right you get under the California Consumer Privacy Act is you a right to know what information is collected about you. Now the second thing. The second right you get is you get to know whether the information has been sold and to who they sold the information. So this is like getting to kind of keep tabs on where your information is going. Now at that point you can opt out, right? If you're over the age of I think it's 16 years old, you can opt out like saying, I don't want you to sell my information to any third party. I don't want my information to be sold whatsoever. If you're under the age of 16, 16 or under, you actually have to opt in before they even have a right to sell your information. So that's kind of how you can see the state is stepping in to kind of protect the privacy of those age 16 and under. Now, I kind of find it interesting that they're using the age of 16 because 16, other than a driver's license, isn't really a legal age of anything, right? You have to be 18 to be an adult. You have to be 21 now to smoke cigarettes. Welcome to 2020 everybody and get alcohol so 21 has been like a an age of if you will like adulthood right that transition to being able to buy alcohol right things like that and 18 right that's been the age at which you become an adult under the eyes of the law but 16 16 has been a driver's license but when it comes to this the consumer california consumer privacy act 16 defines whether or not it's an opt-in opt-out setup for the sale of your private information now it's not always sale remember if these companies share your information with one another to their benefit that's going to be enough for selling right selling doesn't necessarily mean the traditional word of selling the the act is meant to be overbroad so if they just share that information with each other they're going to have to be part of the disclosure again if you request it. Now, the third thing is you're gonna have access to the information they collected about you. This one, to me, kind of seems obvious. Don't you wanna know what they collected about you? I mean, I'm interested to know what they collected about me. And then once I know that, what do you think I'm gonna want them to do? That's your fourth right. Delete it, right? Once you know, I mean, I guess, even if you don't know, you have a right to know, that's your third right. And then you have a right to tell them to delete it. That's your fourth right. So there are two separate rights. You don't actually have to know what they have in order to ask them to delete it. You can even say, I don't even want to know. Just whatever you have about me, delete it. Or you can say, hey, now that I know what you have, keep it. Right? So the third right is the right to know. The fourth right is the right to tell them to delete it. And what's the fifth right? Well, the fifth right is don't pick on me because I know my rights. The fifth right is you can't discriminate against me because I know my rights under the CCPA, the California Consumer Privacy Act. So don't pick on me, don't discriminate against me. That would be a violation as well. So five rights granted under the California Consumer Privacy Act. Number one, know what info is being collected. Number two, know whether that info is being sold and to who it's being sold. Number three, give me access to the information. Let me know what you're collecting. Number four, delete it. If I tell you to delete it, gotta get rid of it. And number five, don't discriminate, don't hate on me because I know my rights. I'm an unbilly baby and I love this episode. That's why I subscribe by hitting over there. And I'm gonna watch another episode by clicking right down there. Thanks for keeping up with us. We'd love to see you. Happy 2020, everybody.